Grace and peace to you from God our Father. For a moment this evening, I, I need you to pretend with me that you are all Uber drivers, okay? And I'm going to give a choice of where you can drive. So we're going to have to pretend that you don't live in the area here around Appleton, but you live in a place called Farmington, New Mexico. Now I'm going to let you decide where you want to drive. You can either drive north to a place called Uray, Colorado. It's about 100 miles away, but it's going to take you three hours to get there. Or you can take the same highway, Highway 550, you can drive south to Albuquerque. That's 183 miles, and that will also take you about three hours. Okay? So you decide which road you want to drive me on, okay? North or south. Okay, let's take a look at those videos. So if you look on the left there, there's a little ledge that goes down about 500 feet. Kind of see the ledge on the left there again? And notice the sign on the right, the hairpin turns there. You see that, the yellow sign? 10 miles per hour. Okay, here's 550 going south. Four lane highway, two going north, two going south. I'm not saying too much about that video because there's really nothing to talk about. It's kind of a straight drive all the way to Albuquerque. So there's one thing I forgot to tell you about um, the Red Mountain Pass. So first I should say, living in Farmington, New Mexico, I traveled both of these roads many times in my life. Okay? And there's some things I should tell you about Red Mountain Pass. So if you are a person who struggles with anxiety or, or motion sickness, or you're afraid of heights, you probably don't want to go on Red Mountain Pass because the top of the summit is at 11,000 feet. Okay, 11,000 feet. Now you notice that the road was a little icy. It does happen, sadly, from time to time that either snow plows or cars will go over the edge. It does happen from time to time. And interestingly enough, if you go over the edge, you're going to have a lot of time to think about what's coming because it's a long ways down to the bottom, it is. Okay, so that's Red Mountain Pass. Uh, that's on the way to Uray, Colorado. You can drive that way if you want. The other way you saw, driving down to Albuquerque, Highway 550, uh, very flat, very straight for the most part. Uh, there's no hairpin turns. There's no ledges or cliffs to fall off. It's a pretty easy drive. So if I were to ask you now, which way, you, Uber driver, which way are you going to drive me to get my donuts in the morning, which way are you going to go? You're going to go north and take the Red Mountain Pass, or are you going to head south? Okay. Now I know some of you here are kind of daring. You like to live on the edge. And trust me, if you go north, it will improve your prayer life. Okay. <laughs> it, it really will. Okay. Now we might look at these two roads and think, yeah, one is really twisting and turning and, and dangerous. I don't know if I want to go that way. The other one's flat and easy. Now we might think to ourselves that a flat, easy path is something that came about with the advent, with the coming of the automobile. But that's not really true. For thousands of years, human beings, animals, kings, royalty, we like flat, straight and kind of boring roads. You see, that's the picture that Isaiah gives us this evening when we look at the words that the gospel writer, gospel writer Luke records to us. You see, Luke refers to Isaiah, and he talks about another guy 
named John the Baptist. Now, if you don't know anything about John the Baptist, he's kind of a, a strange guy because he dressed like another prophet from the Old Testament, a guy named Elijah. And Elijah wore camel's hair and he wore this leather belt. And that's how John the Baptist dressed. And it didn't end there. His diet was locust and honey. And instead of preaching his message kind of in the, the religious center of Jerusalem where all the hubbub and everything took place, John was out in the desert. That was his pulpit. And he was out there baptizing by the Jordan River. Now we're in this series right now called Old School. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why, are we, why are we talking about John the Baptist? Because he was a New Testament guy. Shouldn't we be talking about an Old Testament prophet? Well, trust me when I say this, that John was definitely old school with his message. And he was the one that Isaiah was talking about in his prophecy about preparing the way for the Lord. So this evening, we're going to take a little trip. We're going to walk a path to the manger and to see how John prepares us to do that. So let's look at what Isaiah talked about with the roads. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough ways smooth. If you were to ask a civil engineer, what does it take to build a road? That engineer is going to tell you the more twists, the more turns, the more rocks, the more cliffs, trees, whatever it may be, the more money, resources, time it's going to take to build that road. Red Mountain Pass, for example, that you saw earlier. Millions and millions of dollars, and it took years to build it because they literally had to carve the road into the side of the mountain and blast away rock and then flatten it out. It took a tremendous amount of time to build that road and to prepare it. John, the Baptist, had similar work. He was somewhat of a construction worker and to prepare the hearts of God's people for their coming Savior. And John did that in a very deliberate and direct way because this is what his message was that he spoke to the people. We're told he went into all the country around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance. John's message was repent. And that was maybe a little bit different message than what the rabbis, what the religious types, were sharing with God's people at that time. You should, you ought, you need to, I want you to, might all be things that they would hear. Try harder and obey those Levitical laws to earn God's favor so that he can see how good you are. And that was not John's message. John simply said, repent. Repent. You see, he applied the law to their life, where they had erred, where they had sinned against God, and what that sin meant to God, his anger and wrath over their sin. That was John's message to the people there, repent. That message that John spoke some 2,000 years ago is still valid for us today as we prepare for our Savior. And so for, so for a moment, I want you to think for a moment about the roads, the physical roads that you will travel to do things connected with Christmas. I'm guessing some of you will travel a road that will probably take you to the mall so you can do some shopping. You'll probably travel a road that, that will take you to a relative's house so that you can enjoy food and maybe open some presents. You may travel a road to some kind of Christmas concert or entertainment of some type. Maybe you'll take a road that'll take you to the rest center. My point is this. We are going to travel many roads around this area to do things connected to the Christmas celebration. Is it wrong to travel those roads? Absolutely not. Unless there's another road that you don't travel and prepare. And that is the road to the Savior. That is the road in your heart, right? Our faith life. 
You see, when we look there and we look at our road to the Savior, it's cluttered. There are hazards, especially at this time of year because we call it the season of Christmas, but we could call it the season of materialism. We look at that road and there's that huge crack of envy. I wish I could have what that person has. Maybe there's that boulder of desire. I want that gift and I want it now. Maybe there's that, that tree limb of comparing that I didn't get what that person got, so it's not fair to me. See, we look at that road and it's, it's full of hazards. And, the gospel, and John would say to us today, repent. Repent of your sins. For those sins of materialism, of comparing and desiring and cutting, complaining and, and coveting, repent. And so we come to our God and we do that and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my misguided priorities at times, for those desires, and God forgives. John says, repent. Do you understand what that, that word means? And in the Hebrew language and in the Greek language, it really has the same idea to turn, to turn and, and to go another way, even to pull a U-turn. And so God answers that prayer when we confess our sins to him. He sends his Holy Spirit to give us strength through his word and sacrament. And God answers that prayer with his forgiveness. So this brings us to our first truth this evening that we want to think about. If we could see that slide. Preparing the road for the Savior begins with repentance. Repentance. But there's more that John shares with us as well, because we are also told this that John shared in his message. We're told in that next verse, he went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of the repentance for the forgiveness of sins. This was a message that the people desperately, desperately needed to hear. Because so often what they heard from the rabbis and the other teachers was God's law. You must do, you must do, you must do. And they went out and they listened to John and they heard about grace and mercy and love and forgiveness. And they loved it. And they flocked to John to hear that message about God's love and forgiveness. You see, brothers and sisters, in our world today, the, the same holds true. There are so many who are desperate to hear that message of God's love and forgiveness in Christ. Think for a moment about how Christ won our forgiveness. You see, there were many roads that Jesus walked as well. Maybe we think about that road of poverty that Jesus walked. See, in life, when Jesus walked on certain roads, it, it was never about making money it was not about possessions or property. We know toward the end of Jesus' life, he basically had the shirt on his back. He walked that road of poverty. He walked a road of service. He taught those that he came in contact with. He healed them. He restored them. He raised the dead. He lifted them up. He washed their feet. He walked a road of service. He walked a road of suffering. There were those he preached to who rejected his teaching because they said, this is a hard teaching. He was verbally assaulted by the religious leaders of the time. And we know that he walked that path, that road to the cross. And in his passion, God turned his back on him. Jesus walked a road of suffering as well. And he walked those roads and he did it with perfection. And when John saw Jesus at the Jordan River, John cried out, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, brothers and sisters, as we prepare our hearts, as we come to the manger, there's a message there for us as well. Forgiveness. Forgiveness for our misguided priorities for the times when, when we've fallen into materialism and comparing and desiring and coveting. Forgiveness, brothers and sisters. 
grace and mercy and love and the compassion of our God. I can tell you that there are people in our world who are desperate to hear that message. As a missionary of 20 years, I served people who came from Native American background. They believed in the traditional religion of the Navajo, of the medicine man. And when they were struggling in life emotionally or spiritually, they would go to him and the medicine man would say, we'll do these ceremonies so that you can find something called hoja in the Navajo language, the blessing way, harmony and peace in your life. You do these ceremonies, you pay thousands of dollars, and you will have peace. You know what those people said? They never found it. And I shared Christ with them and forgiveness and love and mercy, and they were life changers. It was a life changer for many because they learned about Christ. God gave me the privilege to work with some Christians who came from a, a Pentecostal or a charismatic background, very legalistic, and to share with them that you don't have to, you don't need, you can't do, and to share with them you live in grace and look what your Savior Jesus has accomplished for you. You are forgiven. See his mercy and love. It was a life changer for them. And so, brothers and sisters, this is the other thing we want to understand this evening. Our second truth, that as we prepare to receive our Savior, preparing the road with Jesus brings forgiveness. It brings forgiveness. Now, there's one last thing that that John would show us this evening. And so I, I have a question for you. Can I ask you to be a John the Baptist? Can I do that? I, I'm not going to ask you to eat locust and honey. I'm not going to ask you to, to dress up in camel's hair or, or to move out to the wilderness in northern Wisconsin and start preaching. I'm not going to ask you to do that. But this is kind of a, a go thing. Can you think about someone in your life, a friend, a neighbor, who you might invite to come to one of our Christmas activities here at our North Campus or, or our South Campus to show them Christ and all that he has accomplished, to share that message with him? You see, this is one of our G's for our North and South Campus, the, the go. And so I, I pray that you'll consider being a John the Baptist, to share that message, in a sense, to invite and say, come and hear, come and listen. Learn about your Savior, Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, may God bless your journey and your travels, physically, the roads that you travel on to keep you safe. And may he bless your travel and your road to your Savior, Jesus, into the manger to see all that he has accomplished for you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, it's a busy season with many things going on, many good blessings of family and friends, of great places to go, of good fun. We pray, Lord, as well, that you would lead us to your manger to see all that you are and all that you have accomplished for us. We give thanks, Lord Jesus, that you were born into this world so that you could die and rise and ascend to rule for us and your people. So for these things, Lord Jesus, we give thanks in your name. Amen. This